Okay, let's move on to question nine, which is also Euclidean geometry. So let's just jump right into it. It says that in the diagram, tangents are drawn from point M outside the circle to touch the circle at B and N. Okay, already, that's your first theorem, guys. If you have a circle and you have tangents drawn from the same external point, so they're tangential there and there, it means that these two tangents are equal in length. Okay, very important. So, Tangents drawn from M, which means that this tangent over here is equal to that tangent over there, to the point of tangency, these lines up until there and there. Okay. Then it says the straight line from B passing through the center of the circle. Okay, so this line here is a diameter. Just remember that. Okay, this is the center. Meets MN produced, okay, at A. NM is produced to K such that BM is equal to MK. Okay, so that's these two lines here being equal. Okay. BK and BN are drawn and let angle K equal X. Okay, so that angle up there is X. Okay. So, before we go any further, what do we know? What else can we say? Okay, if this is the diameter here, and this is a tangent. What can we say about that? Remember, this is a radius. This little line over here is a radius. And it touches the circle at the same point of tangency. We know, guys, that it's going to be 90 degrees because the diameter is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so we know that 90, there's 90 degrees over there. So 9.1 says determine with reasons the size of N1 in terms of x. Okay, so n1 is this angle over there. Okay, so before we even look at n1, we need to look at x. Okay, so x is up in the top corner there. We know that these two lines are equal to each other here. And what do we know about angles opposite equal sides? They are equal to each other. So we know that b1 is equal to x. Okay, so let's write that down. Angle B1 is equal to X. Why? Because of angles opposite equal sides. Okay. So now, how do we get into this triangle over here that contains N1? Okay. Well, if we look at this angle over here, M2, if we have a triangle that looks like this and we extend the one side, We've got M2 over there, and we found that these two angles are x, okay? So obviously M2 is equal to 2x because of exterior angle of a triangle. M2 is equal to 2x, exterior angle of the triangle. So we can put that on our diagram. M2 is equal to 2x, okay? Now remember, we said that Mn is equal to MB. Why? Because tangents from an external point, but we haven't actually written that down. So let's put that down. MN is equal to MB. Tangents from external point. Okay. And so now we can say that because these two sides are equal, N1 must equal B2 because of angles opposite equal sides. So N1 is equal to B2. Angles opposite equal sides. Remember, this whole question is for six marks, guys. So you're going to have a long argument like this. Now, if we look at that triangle, we've got M and M2 is equal to 2x, N1, which is what we're trying to find, and B2. But remember, these two angles are the same. So we can say that that angle plus angle is equal to 2N1, okay? And sum of angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 2N1 plus 2x is equal to 180 degrees. Why? Sum 
of angles in the triangle. And therefore, if we divide everything by 2, we're going to get, we can take that 2 away, that 2 away, and this is going to divide to give us 90 degrees. And now, if we subtract x from both sides, we're going to get that n1 is equal to 90 degrees minus x. And remember, in terms of x. So up here, we can fill that in on our diagram. We know that this angle here is 90 degrees minus x, and that angle there is 90 degrees minus x. Okay, easy peasy. 9.2 says prove that BA is a tangent to the circle passing through KB and N. Okay, so what we need to imagine here is that there is a circle. Let me change the color of the circle. Circle, let's make it light blue. Okay, passing through K, B and N. Okay, that's what that circle is going to do. And we're trying to prove that this line here is a tangent to that circle, okay? So how do we do that, okay? Well, we can prove that the tan chord theorem applies, or we can prove that a line through the center of that circle is perpendicular to the tangent. I'm going to say tan chord theorem, okay? So if we look at that circle, this here would be a chord on that circle. I hope you guys agree. If we can prove that this B3 is equal to that angle over there, we can use converse tan chord theorem. Okay, so first of all, remember right at the beginning, they said that obviously these lines from M, let me use another color, are tangents. And this is a line through the center. So we established that that is a 90 degrees. So MBA is 90 degrees. Let's write that down. Angle MBA is 90 degrees. Why? Because tangents are perpendicular to the diameter. That's in our original circle. Okay, so we've established that there is a 90 degree angle there. Okay, and then we also established that B2 equals 90 degrees minus X. Angle B2 it's equal to 90 degrees minus x, and that was proven. Because remember, we proved that angle B2 is equal to angle N1 because they're opposite equal sides, and so we found that they're both equal to 90 minus x. Okay, so if this whole angle here is 90 degrees, and that is 90 minus x, then this angle here has to be x. I hope you agree with me, because if we have an angle there, and this is 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees minus x, and that's x, because if we add them together, we're going to get 90 degrees. So we can say, therefore, B3 is equal to x, okay? And remember, we are given right at the beginning that angle K is equal to x, so angle K is equal to angle B3, which we've just proven, and therefore, what was it? CB or BA. BA is a tangent to circle KBN. Okay? Because remember, if we look up here, what I drew was this big blue circle. Okay? So I drew a big blue circle. K sits there, N sits there, and B was here. Okay? And we've got this situation. And then we've got a line coming through there all the way to A, okay? And we've just proved that this angle here is equal to X, and that angle there was given as X, okay? So the angle subtended, or the angle between the tangent and the chord, is equal to the angle subtended by the chord. But now because we've used the theorem kind of backwards, we need to say converse tan chord theorem. Okay, another way you guys could have done it, if I look over here, I'm trying to see what I can erase. Okay, I can erase 
all of this stuff. Here, if I look here, because this line is equal to this line is equal to this line, we can say that this is the center of that circle through K, B and N, this blue circle, because that would be a radius, that's a radius and that's a radius. And we proved that 90 degrees happens over here, okay? So because we've proved that this is the center, we can prove that this is a radius. And because the radius is perpendicular to this line, this has to be a tangent, because remember, a radius is perpendicular to the tangent at point of tangency. That is another way that you could prove it. Okay, so guys, when you get a diagram like this, just tips, read the love letter. It has so much stuff that you need to fill into your diagram. Also, the moment you see something like diameter, it should spur a thousand different theorems for you. 90 degrees on the circumference, half of it is the radius, it goes through the center, all of that. Tangents should also spur a thousand things. So the moment you see key words, fill in exactly what you know on your diagram. It's going to make your life so much easier when you start trying to prove things, okay? And also guys, every single statement you say. If I say to you, you are a grade nine and I know nothing about you, you're gonna say, prove it. And I'm gonna be like, okay, you are turning 15 this year and you were in grade eight last year. I have to give you a reason. Guys, if you wanna say something, you have to prove it, give reasons. Every single statement you make, give a reason. Even if it's proven or given, give a reason. Okay.